that if God showed you who you were going to be, you would be, you would pass out. And the heaviness of what that feels like would make you not even start. Maybe you have a gift that you hide because it's not common. Your rareness? That's your gold mine. The reason why we don't have nothing right now because nobody knows who we are. <laughs> so it's your goal to not become popular, but to become valuable. Popularity means nothing if there's no value. Everybody wants to be famous. Famous for what? Why? Why do I need to know you? Because you have pretty pictures? What is your value in this world? Hi beauties, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, my name is Pamela Ricardo. So today I wanna to talk about getting a vision for your life. Before I got a vision for my life, I was exhausted. I didn't know where to put my energy. I was filling up time with things that didn't help my life. And I found getting out of the bed in the morning to be very, very negative. I literally had days where I'd be like, God, what am I here for? And I would proceed with my day and my day would run me and I wouldn't run my day. When I decided to sit down and listen and write out what I think God's vision for me could look like, he began to reveal things to me. And I think that once you know what your vision is, you'll decide that a lot of things that you're doing right now have nothing to do with your vision. <laughs> and you will be able to course correct. But until we know what the vision is, we will continue to do things every single day that make us feel dead on the inside. And I don't know about you, but this life is to be lived and I'm trying to live it up. Okay, I'm 37. So if you're watching this and you're in your 20s or your early 30s or your 40s or your 50s, whatever, it is never too late to look for the vision in your life. Because over the years, it becomes more and more obvious to you who you are. And once you become okay with who you are and you start cultivating it, sky's the limit. So that's what we are going to talk about today. Cultivate your gifts and become a master at them. Your gift is unique to you. So when you combine your gift with your purpose in life, there's your unique mission. There's a lot of lawyers, a lot of doctors, a lot of singers, a lot of actors content creators, what do you bring to that space that's different, that makes it unique? We love Michael Jackson, we love Beyonce, we love Celine Dion. There's people who have done a career that has been done by many, but they've done it in such a way that it will never be forgotten. Your purpose is to never be forgotten. You're not going to be forgotten because when you give the world the gift that God gave you, he gave it to you, no one can do this but you. He has made all of us unique. So when you bring that gift to any environment, that gift is utilized because it's with your purpose. You know, it takes time. Sometimes you'll, get, you'll keep being in situations where that gift in you saves the day. You know, your gift of laughter, you go into a hospital setting and people are sick and crying and you just know what to say, when to say it, you're empathetic. You just, you've got this gift of feeling the room and being able to warm people's hearts. That's a gift. But maybe your purpose is to save people's lives through laughter. Maybe you're a comedian. All of these things go together. You find yourself in situations all the time where who you are has made that situation better. After you've done it for a while and start to see that you are making a difference in this world by using who you are, it'll all start coming to you. That's part of the vision for your life to use the gift that you have naturally to heal the world in your own special way. We all bring something to this table of life. Maybe you're here to invent something. Maybe you're here to help people. Maybe you're here to build something. Maybe you're here to write something. Maybe you're here to create a TV show that changes the world's perspective on things. Who are you? You know, but the thing about vision is it comes in phases too. So who you are today may not be who you are 10 years from now. Right now, let's say you're in your profession of being a singer and you're singing your butt off. You're everywhere. You're doing concerts. You're opening for people. You're, you're on the rise or maybe you've already arrived. But who's to say 10 years from now, you don't reach maximum burnout. And although you still love singing, you're still great at it. Your love for it is different now. Doesn't mean you don't want to sing anymore. Doesn't mean singing is out of your life, but maybe the way you're doing it will change. 
because vision comes in phases. Maybe now you are being sent to go look at an open mic show and there's this amazing singer on stage. And that's your moment of clarity that I can still be in this industry, but now I can do it my way. I can cultivate this new artist, teach them everything that I've learned over the years, show them the ropes, become a manager. Maybe you go from being that singer or that actor or that whatever to now helping someone else become that. And that's way more fulfilling to you because your purpose is to be that, the person who cultivates people's careers. You know, and this is just an example of how purpose has phases. When we think about vision, we think about what is the end of my life going to look like or what's my calling on this uh, in this life. And that may scare us to even try to figure out, especially when we're in a position right now, today, that we don't like. But it's okay. Once you discover the vision, you start getting all of these little clues as to what's to happen next and where to go next and what to do. But the first thing we have to do is figure out what is God's vision for my life. When you have a vision, it's like having the destination to put into your GPS. Yeah, it doesn't mean you won't run into traffic every now and again or roadblocks and maybe, you know, it'll take you off track for a few minutes, but you'll get to the destination, right? That's life. But when you don't know where you're headed, you have no idea of who you are on this planet and what you're called to be doing while you're here, life can take you on a heck of a ride. Literally, your friends can call you at any point throughout the day and be like, hey girl, let's go, grab, go, let's go grab lunch. You're gonna go. Then after that, let's go grab drinks. You're gonna go. Or then some guy will call before you know you're supposed to be getting in the bed and you're gonna answer it anyways, because you have no boundaries. When you don't have vision, you have no discipline, <laughs> you have no boundaries. You just go with the flow. And that's for me a no-go. I don't go with the flow anymore. I do to an extent, but now that I have the vision for my life, I understand that sometimes a flow can lead me into a greatness, but I'm already on track at that point. But if you're not even on track right now, there's no room, honey. There's no room for going with the flow. <laughs> you need to find your path. So what I did is I've made myself write down, what was I good at? What are the good characteristics about myself? I would write down the characteristic and the career path that would be attached to it. So let's say you've got a great voice, profession, singer. Let's say you're very charismatic, profession, actor. Maybe you're really great with kids, profession, daycare center, right? After you figured out what you're good at and what possibly it could bring you, I want you to look at all of the things you've written about yourself, all these positives. What is the one thing that you do really well that has come to you very naturally for your entire life? You didn't even have to work at it at this point. You are naturally this. Are you naturally talented at singing? Are you naturally an actor? Are you naturally good at improv? Are you naturally good with children? Whatever you're naturally good at, that's your gift. Your mission in this life, 100%, is to find out why you're here and what makes you valuable. If someone could say what they knew you for, what would they say? What would they say? Because if they can't say nothing, <laughs> you know, you got work to do. The world is based on people needing people for other things. If you're not needed for anything, people will never come look for you. There's no reason to find you. Become valuable in something and people will find you. They will seek you out. You won't have to put yourself in a compromising position. You, you will be sought out. Cultivate your gift, work on your passion, work on your gift. That's part of your vision. You gotta get so clear with your vision that when people do come to you, you know what to say. When I was creating my vision, I knew things that I needed. You know, like if you're creating a business, you can say things like, all right, I know that by June, I need an office space in Buckhead because that is where all of my clientele lives. I need to have an assistant. I need to have an accountant. I need to have this much set away before I get this open because I know I need to take care of my website. And on my website, it needs to have this, 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 and this. I need to find someone to work on that. I also need to hire a photographer for my photos for my website. This is how you make the vision come to life. You're not gonna get all the answers in like one day because God's not going to give it to you like that. If God showed you who you were going to be, you would be, you would pass out. And the heaviness of what that feels like would make you not even start. You wouldn't even believe it. You wouldn't even believe what he has for you. It's just that magnificent. It's just that magnificent. And so he doesn't show it to you all, all, all at once. You get steps. 
He will order those steps for you. But on our part, we co-create with him by listening for the next step and paying attention. Get your vision for your life so that your life can be full. When you have a vision for your life, when you finally have your vision for your life, the devil is not gonna distract you with bad things as much as he's going to distract you with good things, good opportunities, good people coming to you asking you to come help them with their stuff, good times with friends, good trips, good things to take you right off of your course. <laughs> and that's probably the hardest part of being very clear because the path to your vision is very narrow. When you know your vision and you know where you're heading in life, it's a very narrow life. It's narrow because you always know what you need to be working on. When you have your vision, you really do start writing down everything that needs to be done. You actually start spending your days in time blocks where you know during these hours, this needs to get done. There's no time to play. I don't know about y'all, but I'm 37 and I know like, it is not no more time to play. You guys, we only have a limited amount of time on this earth, so we gotta make sure we make the most of it, right? So when you have your vision for your life, you're going to time block your days. There's gonna be a time for writing what needs to get done, either do that the night before or that morning. There's gonna be time to exercise or meditate because you need to have your mind right. Time to eat healthy, cooking your meals ahead of time so you always have food ready. You're gonna live a very narrow life because you need structure. A life of no vision has no discipline in any area. You know what I mean? You don't, you, don't, you don't have a reason to have discipline. For what? You don't even know where you're headed. So everything can happen. Anything can go. The holiday weekend comes, let's do it. Instead of spending that weekend knowing that you have one extra day to get things done and you actually go do that, instead you're trying to find a reason to go get more off path. I'm just keeping it real with you guys because I've been there before. When I was much younger, I didn't know where I was headed and my life definitely looked like it. <laughs> I mean, God never left me out. God never left me, let me stay down too long because I would eventually, you know, smarten up and get my life together. But having no vision and not knowing where you're going, you will say yes to anything. So the devil knows that when you are working on your vision and you're not getting distracted, he can distract you with good things. So saying no to good things is going to be a big part of staying on your own course. It's going to be hard, but when you have a vision, there's a drive that builds up in you every single day that makes you get up, makes you handle your business. It's not going to be so appetizing to get off course with it, especially if you know that the thing you're working on for this day is going to take you to the next level. You're going to feel a lot more inclined to go ahead and get that accomplished than go do something else. The drive that comes along with knowing where you're headed is just different. It's different. You just know where you're going and there's an excitement behind it. You have to become valuable in this world. That's how you're going to make your money. That's how you're going to make your living. That's how you're going to make your mark. It's all about who you are. You are everything. So once you figure out who you are and you exude that by the way you move in this world, people will know who to come to for whatever you're offering. If you're great at doing hair, you've done so many people's hair, you've done your hair, your, your business is booming, you've been cultivating your gifts, you, you're, you're learning new techniques. Now when people come to Atlanta or wherever they're coming from or wherever all over the world, they're hitting up you. They heard about you. The reason why we don't have nothing right now because nobody knows who we are. <laughs> so it's your goal to not become popular, but to become valuable. Popularity means nothing if there's no value. Everybody wants to be famous. Famous for what? Why? Why do I need to know you? Because you have pretty pictures? What is your value? in this world. What do you do so well that I want to pay you for it? I want to give you all my coins. What do you do so well that I want to hire you or bring you on my team or build with you? That's what we're working on when it comes to finding our vision, planning our life, cultivating our gifts. You owe it to yourself to not wake up another Monday hating your life. You owe it to yourself. How many more weeks do we need to be on Monday waiting for Friday? That is whack. <laughs> it sucks, right? There's nothing to look forward to except watching the clock all day long, waiting for your break. And then after your break, you're doing the countdown of when am I getting off? That's not living. That's a lot of time in your day that you're spending at a place you do not like. Now, you may be there right now because God's working on some things inside of you. Trust me, that might be the main reason why you're there. 
maybe he's working on you so that when you get out of there, you don't <laughs> ruin the situations that he has for you next. Maybe he's working on your leadership skills. Maybe he's helping you not be so argumentative. Maybe he's teaching you patience. Or maybe he's not giving you what you want at that job so he can push you out of it so that you can focus on what you're supposed to be really doing. It's a lot of reasons you may be where you are. It's your job to figure it out and move accordingly. But anywhere that doesn't make you feel lit up when you walk in the door, anywhere where you feel you don't add value, figure out why are you there right now and either figure out your exit route or figure out how to get better at what you're doing so that you can be valuable where you are. But we all have a mission, we all have a vision, but you gotta cultivate it, it takes time. You're not gonna find your vision when you're hanging out every day. You're not gonna find your vision when you're serial dating. You're not gonna find your vision while you're partying. You're not gonna find your vision staying up late watching Netflix. Your life is way more valuable than all of those things I just named. Taking four or five days to figure this stuff out and sit down and really get in touch with who you are. Because maybe you have a gift that you hide because it's not common. <laughs> your rarity, if that's a word, <laughs> your rareness, that's your gold mine. So be okay with it and learn to be okay with it. Listen, when you got your vision, you will choose different friends. You will choose how you spend your money differently. You will read different books. You will watch different movies, if any at all. Even your hobbies will be centered around your vision. You're not gonna just be going to this party and hanging out here when you have a vision for your life. You're gonna find things to do that match what you do. Like my actor friends, they go do improv together. They're still in their gift. They're honing in on it, but they're having fun doing it. You golf. Golfing is a good place for people to meet and network with other business owners and other people who are, you know, doing really well for themselves. Maybe you need to learn how to play some golf. <laughs> You know, or, or, you know, maybe you need to be going to conferences if you want to be a speaker. Get around other speakers. You know, hair conventions if you want to open up your own hair company or your own salon. We got to start thinking this way because who do you want, who are you becoming? Surround yourself with that. Learn. Be open to learning. I talked about that in my last video. We got to be okay with not being the smartest one in the room. Especially when you get the vision for your life. You got so much to learn. So much to learn. But let's focus this week on writing out what is so great about you, what are some characteristics about you that are valuable, and which ones are the ones that come to you the most natural. That's what I want you to focus on this week. And as you know, they say, where there is no vision, the people perish. And that is very, very true. When you have nowhere to look forward to getting to, don't you just do nothing? <laughs> <laughs> like think about those times in your life where you really just had a day off and you had nowhere to be. Anything could have happened, right? And you would have been all right with it because it was better than what you had planned for your day because you had nothing planned. That's what living life with no vision is like. You have no plans. You have nothing to look forward to. You're just like, eh, it's Tuesday. Eh. I don't think you want that for the long haul. I know I don't. I want a life that when I wake up, I know that on the other side of this day is some accomplishments, some happiness, some interactions, some transactions. Like you wanna live a life that feels like you're here for a reason and you are. I don't care what you're doing right now in your life on a Monday to Friday basis. If you hate it with all your might, please decide this week that you're not gonna stay here that much longer. Please decide this week that I am going to at least care enough about me that I'm gonna write down what I'm good at and who I am so I can figure out how to get up on up out of this because this is not where I'm supposed to be you know you feel that way you know you do every time you clock in at this place you're like oh my god how did I get here why are you there create the game plan this week you have no more time to waste I mean I'm trying to put some pressure on you because it's just that serious your life is that serious okay it is that serious because I don't want you to die. And I don't want you to die young. And I don't want you to die hungry. I don't want you to die because you didn't ever take the time to cultivate yourself. Because who you are is worth millions. Millions, millions, millions. There's a speaker in you. There's a caregiver in you. There's a writer in you. There's an athlete in you. There's a business owner in you. There's so much in you. <laughs> but until you start to really sit down and see yourself as your higher self, and stop acting like you don't deserve what everybody you see that you admire has. You deserve all that stuff too. You deserve it too. Say, I deserve that too. I'm just as dope. 
I just haven't been spending my time wisely. Now it's time to think higher of me. That's what I had to say to myself, man. I used to have to take some jobs sometimes, chasing my dream career, and I'd be like, whoo, how'd I get here, honey? But sometimes I would learn stuff at those jobs that helped me in the future. So there's that part too. You're never nowhere, you're nowhere on this planet on accident. <laughs> there's something to learn everywhere you are, whether it's learning that you don't wanna do this, that's another, you know, that could be one thing, but there's also maybe you're learning some life lessons at this place too. Don't ever discredit that. But you deserve to be so happy. <laughs> you deserve all the trips. You deserve the bomb savings account. You deserve the car. You deserve the house. You deserve the life. And you also deserve the feeling that purpose gives you. When you're in this world helping people and making this world a better place, that doesn't have a, a monetary exchange to it. It doesn't. Helping someone and having someone send you a message saying, wow, I'm so thankful for you for doing A, B, and C. I'm just happy you're here on this earth. Can you imagine someone saying that to you? A stranger saying that to you, that because of you, they didn't hurt themselves, or because of you, they decided to go for it, or encouraging and helping people? No monetary exchange. Why are you here? Why are you valuable? What do you bring to this planet? What do you bring to this planet? Because your happiness is inside of your vision for your life. As long as you don't know who you are and where you're headed, you're gonna die on the inside. Everywhere you go, you're gonna die. You're gonna hate the job, you're gonna hate the relationship. You have got to get you together. You have to. So promise me you're gonna do that. <laughs> and I'm proud of you for just even taking the time to watch a video that says vision. Obviously, you're curious about how to cultivate yours. So start. Don't let this just be something you listen to and you just go on about your day. Start. Figure out why you like the people that you like. What are the characteristics that they have in them that you like? Is it their charisma? Is it their, the way they make you laugh? Maybe there's a part of that in you. This is all about self-discovery. That's how we get to the vision. All right? So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.